Okay, today is the 19th, it's a Saturday, so that means it's time for another one of my stories. And I'm going to do it a bit differently today. I don't, you probably really can't tell, but my face is kind of a bit darker because I don't have any bright yellow notes on the screen in front of me. I have not prepared any notes for this because today's story is incredibly personal to me. And I don't want to have to spend like 20 minutes or whatever writing about it and then another 10 minutes talking about it on camera. I'd rather just talk about it and get it over with. Now, when I first planned this particular, th this thing that I was going to talk about, I put down in my notes just as my aversion to certain numbers. And I'm just going to put those numbers on screen in post because I don't want to think about them too hard, but I'm going to have to describe them anyway. Because what this ultimately ties into is the last five years, well, not the last five years, but five years that I spent going to what is high school in the UK, and it's years seven to eleven, so GCSE years and the three before that, secondary school. Now, a bit of background. At the time, I, I mentioned this in last week's story time about where I used to live. I used to live in a small village kind of near Castleford, which is near Wakefield, which is in Yorkshire, and I went to the grammar school at Leeds, or Leeds Grammar School as it was called in my first year there. In any case, um, I don't remember the exact distance, but it's between 20 and 30 miles away from where I lived, so... and at the time my father worked, I don't remember where he worked, but certainly for a couple of years he worked where we live now, which is why we moved, but wanted to finish my GCSEs before we moved, so that's why. So, for the majority of the time, that while we, while we were living there, the father either wasn't home or was only home in the evenings, he had to leave early in the morning. So for five years I had to get the bus to, to school. And normally that wouldn't be so bad. And, you know, a lot of people have to get the bus to high school, what am I complaining about? But it was, you know, it was 20 to 30 miles. I had to get up at, like, before 6 in the morning, and I'd get to school, like, just before 8. Like, that that's kind of how bad it was. And then, in order to come home, um, lessons would finish, they were supposed to finish at 5 to 4, and my bus would arrive at about 10 past 4, I think. But to get to the bus stop, you had to walk, like, half a mile, because, like, the... I had to get from classes to to our lockers, which, like, we weren't allowed to take our, our bags to lessons, which was absolutely retarded now that I think about it. But, um, yeah, we had to go back to our lockers, and locker rooms would always be mobbed, because they're really small, they didn't seem to think about, you know, personal space and stuff. And then from there, we had to get out of the main buildings completely, then walk half a mile down the, the drive, because for some reason, the school had this half-mile drive before we actually got into the school itself, we had to walk through the school grounds. And then an extra, uh, I don't know what the exact distance is, it's like another 300, 400 metres, which is like across at least one road, or across two roads, so it's like an island in the middle of two lanes, to get to the bus stop. And you know, even then, I'd get the bus at about ten past four, and I wouldn't get home until half past five. And, you know, as a 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old, yeah, it was incredibly taxing. And what made it worse was it wasn't one direct bus, and this is kind of what the problem is. I had to get two buses, I had to get a connecting bus, and the way things worked out was that if I if I missed that, that bus, the, the third bus of the day, so the, the, the bus from the school to the city centre of, of Leeds, which is, I had to get a bus into Leeds then out to the school, and then from the school into Leeds back home. If I missed that bus into Leeds, then I would subsequently, it would have a domino effect, I would miss the, the bus home. And it, this this conversation is kind of going everywhere at once. But um, now, the, the second bus, I'll, I'll just throw the numbers right now. I had to get the 168 in the morning and then the 36 f like from Leeds city centre to the school, and then 36 from the school back to city centre, and then the 167 from city centre back home. Because the 168 and 167 took similar routes, but the 167 was a bit faster. Um, yeah. So, 
If I missed the 36, then I would miss the 167. And as it is, the bus company that runs the 167, 168, uh, they very unreliable. Like, the 167 would turn up every day, obviously, but anything past that, uh, it's the middle of the evening, who cares if we send a bus? Really? Like, sometimes there would just be days where I'd be standing there and the bus just wouldn't arrive. Just wouldn't turn up. And so I'd have to find another way to get home. And so if I were to miss the, the 167, which came at oh, about quarter to five or thereabouts from Legion Centre, then my options were either wait for the um, the next 168, which may or may not turn up, or take the 163, which is another bus that ran two stops down, which went all around the houses via Pluto and back, and ultimately got to the same stop, but, like, it took a lot longer. Um, the 166 did that as well, but I never had to get that, I don't think. So, over the years, I built up this anxiety about, you know, pertinent to missing the bus. Um, like, basically, from my point of view, if I didn't get the 36, I didn't get home. Obviously I did, and that's kind of just my childhood, my childish imagination just overreacting, but, yeah, miss 36, don't get home. And so, what, what ended up happening was I'd start running down the, the school drive in order to, to get to the bus. And you know, there, there would be days where I would get out of class late, or locker rooms would be too packed for me to get my stuff in time, and you know I'd, I'd miss the bus, and it, it it would freak me the f out. Like you know, running down the road from the school to the um to the bus stop, like that's like running in the same direction the bus would be coming from, kind of sort of Indiana Jones running away from a boulder style. Like I know it seems really stupid, but but to me. It's equivalent to, like, running away from a tornado or a wall of fire. Like, if it overtakes you, that's it, game over, you lose, you're dead. That's how it felt to me. And it's something that I still have traumatic flashbacks about now. It's something that I still have nightmares about. Like, seriously. I'm nearly 18, and I still have nightmares about something that happened for five years of my life in my childhood. And I know it's really stupid. But I suppose what didn't help was the fact that, you know, the the bus operators that did the 167, 168 just decided not to turn up from time to time. Um, eventually what ends up happening, and th this is like literally right at the end of year 11, so like the last two or three months that I was at the school ever, for the rest of my life ever, um, the teachers finally realised, hang on, this is actually fucking him over in the in the head. We, we need to do something about this. And so after a load of complicated discussions with teachers and whatever, they finally decided, okay, we'll let you leave school half an hour early every day. You can take your bag to last lesson, go half an hour early, just whatever. And that made me so much happier, because I'd, I'd leave at half past three instead, get an earlier 36, because they came about every 20 minutes, because the 36 was reliable. Um, I would arrive in Leeds Centre in, Leeds City Centre in enough time to catch the an earlier 168, which would get me home at, at about, I don't, I'd say, for, like, before 5 o'clock. And, you know, that that meant so much to me. And that kind of manifested itself in a stomach ulcer. And my form tutor, who was a biology teacher as well, she was a, I think she had a doctorate in biology or something like that, I'm not sure. But, like, she was able to explain it. Like, in the same way that some people don't get any, like, breathing conditions from smoking until they quit smoking, it, it's the same kind of, I'd been building up this ball of stress over five years, that on the day it was released, it just turned into this physical ailment, because it's like, th there's no more stress building up to hold it back, it's just bleh, immense pain, gastritis and so on. And I suppose it happened at a good time, because I recovered just in time for my exams, and, you know, everything was all happy and shiny and yay. And I've never had to worry about it ever since, but I still have nightmares about it, and that's the problem. Um, but just to put into perspective the, um, the 167, 168 situation, there was one day in the winter of 2011, 2010, 2011, around that time, I think it was, like, I got on the bus in the morning, like, this is at, like, 20 past 6 in the morning, and got on the bus, had to get off at the, literally the next stop, because the engine had overheated, in the middle of winter, snow and ice everywhere, engine overheated. 
and that's it, it, that's like them at their finest. There was one time where I I got the one six eight into Leeds city centre in the morning. Everything's perfectly fine. Then I find out because it, you know it's in the winter, the thirty six like had to be cancelled because I don't know because reasons. And so I went back outside because. Uh, the 36 ran from Leeds bus station, and then the 168, 167 ran from just outside it. Bus stop F5, if you know the area. And uh, now I went back outside to wait for the next 168, 167, whatever. And I believe I was standing there for about three or four hours. Like, in the snow. There was snow actually building up on top of my head, because I've been standing so still, because no buses had come. Despite the timetable saying, oh, this is due, this is due, this will be in a few minutes. Nothing came. And, like, there's one point where I moved my head slightly, and this load of snow just fell off my head. Like, how long have I been standing here? And eventually, my father did come and pick me up. And that, and just when he arrived, that was when the 167 decided to turn up. Uh, there have been other cases as well. Um, I don't want to go into it too much. Because this is a painful thing we just remember, a painful thing we just talk about. So why are you talking about it, I hear you ask. Well... It, perhaps if I get it on video and put it on the internet, I can just get it off my chest, just forget about it, just... Closure, that's what I'm looking for here. Because those those buses have driven me to distraction, and I, it, it, it's not a nice thing to live with. I don't want to say it's post-traumatic stress, but it was traumatic. So, if ever... You know, if ever I come across numbers like 36 or 167 or 168, or to a lesser degree 163, 166, then I, I will have a natural aversion to them. And you know, being a YouTuber, I'm going to come across numbers like that. I'm going to have videos that end in 36 seconds or whatever. So it's just something I'm going to have to deal with. It's It seems irrational, but just trust me, it was horrible for me at the time. And I'd just like to think that I've managed to get this all out of my system. And I'm not going to have a frivol frivolous ending joke. I'm just going to just fade it into black here. So perhaps you understand me a bit better now. Sorry to lumber you with this.